how good. How good. How good was that? Uh, so, for me, I didn't catch this game in real time, or at least most of it. I had this game on at 2 a.m. here in the States. Woke up at 4 a.m. randomly, and I was like, oh, should I check the score? Looked at it and saw we were winning 95 to 55. So I was like, screw it, I'm going to stay up and watch the rest of the game. And uh, what an unreal feeling, I think. I mean, great performance, absolutely. Probably our best win since the last time we beat Richmond at Optus Stadium in 2021. Um, there's a few ways to judge how good a win is, like in terms of adversity and narrative, you know, the Bulldogs last year. In terms of upsets, there was Collingwood uh, at Marvel in 2022. That was also unreal. But this one was the one where we flexed some muscle and put some real distance between us and Richmond. Um, and of course, there's mitigating circumstances. People come at us, I'm sure, for the fact that Richmond's missing a lot of players, sure. But what, what what excites me about this result is that it just demonstrates the growth that I've been saying has been there. Not just me, not just me, of course, but I've been pretty resolute in my belief that we have been tracking in the right direction. I said last week, the, the performance against Sydney, where we got within four goals, uh, aside from the fact that it was Sydney, it didn't shock me to see us play like that. I felt like we were building towards that. And we were just very scratchy in weeks two and three in particular. So again, this, this result doesn't shock me. Um, even though I didn't tip us, I really thought uh, Richmond would probably have our measure. So I have to concede that it definitely did exceed my expectations. I'm still not shocked because I do feel like this was building. And uh, yes, again, Richmond's missing some soldiers. They're going through their adversity battle. My heart kind of goes out to them a little bit. We've been there. We've been there. But it doesn't mean we can't be excited and thrilled. And that's what we—that's what I'm feeling. Because of a few factors. Like we saw individuals play amazing games. Like Jake Waterman, six goals. Again, I felt like he was building. I, I never would have thought he'd kick six goals in a game, to be honest. But I've been praising him all season. I think Kelly and Yo have been fantastic. I know Kelly's radar was so off in the last quarter, but the game was dead. Um, and he's still he's still been a workhorse for us. And I, I have to respect at least the intensity and the effort, even if the end product today was lacking. Like we could have won by more, um, you know, in that last quarter, we had a few opportunities, but it doesn't matter. Elliot Yo had 15 clearances, I read. I read that on Instagram, I didn't double check the stats, but I believe he has 15 clearances from this game. That's unreal. And then of course, the, arguably the biggest story out of this is Harley Reid, unreal. Like there's such a level of satisfaction that I'm feeling because uh, we've, we've dealt with some shit like in the last five weeks from opposition fans and um, you know I've just been waiting for an opportunity to be like hey look this is the evidence that you were talking shit and you were wrong okay now I'm not going to say that you know we're going to be a finals contender or anything like that and I'm, I'm sick of even qualifying all of my statements like that but the commentary around us being one of the worst teams of all time you know weren't going to win a game this season like some people saying Harley Reid's not that good I mean it's ridiculous to judge a player in his first five games anyway tell me what draftee from last year is capable of doing that I don't remember a draftee doing quite what Harley Reid did in this game for some time when you consider the contested side of things as well he, he's great on the outside that burst pace, like, it's, it feels almost like we have Judd on our list again. And I want to touch wood there, obviously, but we know the kid's got prodigious talent. This isn't out of nowhere. But I am shocked and stunned and, and stoked and pleased that he's been able to do what he has done at AFL level already. Like, now he's got that confidence. And that, that's probably one of the biggest wins out of this performance is, like, we, we've started to build belief slowly. Like, it happened against Sydney, started to get a bit of confidence. It's amazing what belief does to a squad. Oh, there's such a temptation to just go through all the comments like that over the preseason that like told me that I was a nuffy for thinking we'd finish higher than North this year. And we haven't yet, of course, of course. But that doesn't mean the comments and the specific criticisms thrown at me aren't already proven wrong. Like there's a lot of people already proven wrong because they made such harsh and ridiculous statements about West Coast. I maintained through the preseason. It's like, yeah, we we sucked in preseason. Like Fremantle you know, beat us quite easily. And in the clearances in particular, it was like one of the most one-sided clearance games I've ever seen. But I was still chill because I was like, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I know you want it to matter. It doesn't matter. Um, Adelaide torched us. Look at us now. Like, I mean, Adelaide had a really good win as well. And they're probably still better than us, but the gap isn't that big. And the performances that we saw in the preseason have not at all forecasted the first five weeks of the season. Results aside, there's a huge difference between the way we're playing. Even... Even a 76-point loss against the Bulldogs, I really did think we looked different to how we played against Fremantle. So anyway, I'm on a tangent there. I'm fixating on what people have been saying, but I just it's, it just feels really nice and satisfying to be like, ha, you look stupid now. Because God knows I cop it. <laughs> Man, how good is Harley Reid? I'm thinking of doing a video of like, 
who have been our top 10 players this year. And I think Harley Reid features in that top 10. He might even feature higher than that. I mean, when you look at the five weeks holistically, he's had a few games where he wasn't really a factor. So there's definitely players who've got him covered. But now from the position he's in to springboard, like he's going to be inconsistent. You know, he's not necessarily going to do this again, week in, week out. If he does, if he does, he'll, he'll start pulling some Brownlow votes for like for real. I don't know who gets the Brownlow votes in this game. I mean, you'd think maybe Waterman, but Elliot Yo also and Reid, those are probably the three and maybe in that order. But Reid had seven scores score involvements and five clearances or something like that. It might have even been seven clearances. 27 possessions. Like, he's not actually a particularly high-volume player, so to be doing that in his fifth game of AFL level, uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. The Jake Waterman narrative, the story has been fantastic as well. The recovery from his illness, now in career best form. I always had this quiet belief in Jake Waterman. He's not your typical key forward. He's no frills, but he's a competitive beast. He works hard. He's got an amazing endurance. You know, I've heard through the grapevine there's a few times that Waterman was looking around at trades to, to continue his career elsewhere because he wasn't getting the opportunity. So it's really nice and satisfying that plus the illness that he's overcome. To be in the position where he is, it's it's absolutely nuts. On top of this as well, Waffle performances, really good. I mean, we just beat the reigning premiers. He's from Man on the Flag, right? Again, of course, yeah, Dom Sheed's back in the side. Liam Ryan's back in the side. Liam Ryan played halfback, apparently, um, which, you know, I don't think that's the first time we've seen him at halfback, by the way. But he played really well. I don't know, you know, just a theorizing for why that might be the case. I don't know if that's because they thought you get more of the ball at half back you can build your tank you match conditioning better or is it really forecasting what we're going to do with this when he's back in the team uh, come you know maybe, maybe it's next week maybe it's the week after I'm not sure I kind of feel like we need forwards more at the moment um, so I'm not too sure but Liam Ryan could has the, definitely has the tools to be a really good halfback with his speed and his amazing ball use as well which yeah I, I suppose we don't have a player quite like that we've got Jermaine Jones he's got the rebound but the the ball use lets him down Liam Ryan actually is a pinpoint kick so does Liam Ryan come in for say a Witherden next week I'm not too sure I mean, you know Jamison's pulled a hammy um, I think structurally probably Jamison missing probably made sense so I don't know I don't think it was a fake hammy Sheed was okay apparently I'm not really rushing him back into the side either I, I, I think we make limited changes for next week against Fremantle, which is suddenly shaping up to be a decent game. Now, I'm not going to go and say that, you know, the gap's not there between Freo and us. There is, obviously. I've actually been pretty impressed with the fact that they've gotten at least close to Carlton and Port, um, you know, on a neutral and then an away uh, fixture as well. I think I think they're shaping up to be pretty good. However, I do think, you know, styles make fights, as they say in boxing. And it'd be an interesting battle. They're, uh, they're really good at restricting the opposition scoring. That's not a strength of ours. This is the first time we've scored 100, I reckon, since 2022. Could be wrong on that, but I reckon that might be the case. So scoring for us will be tough. They're a pretty defensively sound team. Uh, on the other hand, they also don't score that well. So, you know, you look at their performance against Adelaide. Um, it was 69 to 34, the final score. How did Adelaide compare to us? It's unclear. I mean, I mean, both teams played well this week and won their first game of the season. You'd still say on paper Adelaide's stronger, but in that current form, I just don't see us getting slapped. So, you know, hopefully if we can bring the confidence of last week into this game, home crowd again, I think it might be close. I'm hoping anyway. I'm hoping. There's plenty to play out there, but I just don't, you know, I don't think Fremantle are the sort of side that would butcher us, this version of us. I know what happened last year. We all know what happened last year, but... That was, yeah, that was a particularly pathetic, inept performance. And uh, I just don't think we're going to see that from this team this year. So I'm looking forward to the derby. It should be good. It should be good. It'll be on 6 a.m. Um, I might do a preview for it. See how we go for time. But yeah, to summarize it, you know, I think, I think it, there's so many factors that have gone into seeing an improved West Coast this year. It's getting so, most of the same guys on the park. Sure, we're missing Oscar Allen. Like, that's that's an elephant in the room as well. Like, who would have thought we'd, we'd score 107 points and win a game by six goals early in the season without Oscar Allen? Uh, not many people would have thought that a few weeks ago. But, you know, it's really guys like Elliot Yo and Jeremy McGovern in particular. Those are clearly the two. I think Tim Kelly's worked hard again. He probably hasn't been clean this year, but still the work rate and intensity in the midfield is helping us, like, win clearance battles and stuff like that. I do know Richmond were severely depleted today. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy this win. We want to keep building off this and not have a down game next week. But we've got an interesting block here. We've got, yeah, the Derby. We've got Gold Coast away. That would be pretty tough, I reckon. Um, but then we've got Essendon at Optus as well. So some games where we could at least just get close again. So again, we just want to build on this momentum. Keep improving. We are improving at a rate of knots at the moment. And we've got weapons now. We've got... You know, it's really the senior players in Yo and McGovern, I think, playing maybe career best form or at least scratching the surface of their career best form. It's allowing guys like Waterman as well playing career best form. Waterman and someone like a Petricelli, who again is probably in career best form. The bar's a little bit low with Petch, but he's been pretty good this year. Those guys have the support from the senior players. Those guys are in their prime, playing in a little bit more of a cohesive team. 
we're seeing better performances from them. And of course, Harley Reid has been unreal. Great addition, great addition. But yeah, to summarize, like, we know, we know Richmond were missing players. It's not about blowing this result out of proportion and saying, you know, we're going to rise up the ladder at the moment. We just want to be happy with the win. Um, I do think this is signs of growth, regardless of, you know, the opposition missing some players. Like, they've been missing players all year. They beat Sydney. They nearly beat St. Kilda. This was not the easy kill that it might get portrayed by some. But equally, you know, a, a depleted opposition nonetheless. But we, we can take this performance, this confidence, and, and use it as a springboard into other results. And I believe in us, again, to some extent, to at least bring our A game, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, we're going to try hard regardless of how well our skills are being executed. This is pretty much what Simo's been preaching. He's been talking about this. He's been saying contest, pressure, forward half game. We're starting to see that evolve. It's nice for the football to feel normal again. It hasn't for years. It hasn't for years. 2022 and 2023, you know, we all know, like having seven players miss every week and players never selected on form. They were just selected on how fit they were. I mean, uh, another side point I'll make before I wrap up this video is I looked at the last time the Waffle Eagles played East Fremantle. So this time we beat them, big upset. But you look at last time we played East Fremantle, we lost by 186 points. They scored 215 and we scored 31. And I just had a quick look at the stats. Only two AFL listed Eagles played that day and they were both our Cat B rookies, Tyrell Dewar and Jordan Baker. Neither have played a game. And last year in particular, neither were even close to being AFL ready. So... It just shows what bringing some senior bodies back does. And hopefully now we're just an all rebuilding team who has a hope of winning games at the footy. I felt like this all year. It's nice to have a little bit of satisfaction to be proven right that we can win games this year. And all this talk about how the Eagles preseason, we've gotten worse. We don't look any better. We've gotten younger. Therefore, we must get worse. Preseason form counts. We're one of the worst sides of all time. A lot of those calls have already been proven wrong. So let me know in the comments what you think, guys. Opposition fans try to find ways to try and make us not feel good about this win. I do actually also think about like Eagles fans who have been so anti-Simo and so anti-West Coast. And it's fine to be anti-Simo in general, but some of the vitriolic stuff has been way over the top. And I'm just wondering if they're sitting through this game going, oh, fuck, how am I going to complain about this? I'm sure they'll find a way. So I'll see you in the comments. I'll see everyone else in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.